Welcome to Walton's virtual service of worship here at beautiful Coronation Park. On this gift from God day, wow, here it is, November, and look at it, what a gift. It's amazing. You know, we record these a week or more ahead. So we never know what the weather will be like the day that you're watching the virtual service. But today it's glorious, a real gift from God. Every day is a gift from God. Just some days it's a little brighter gift from God. It certainly <laughs> is. Come, let us worship. Let us worship. Let us join together in the call to worship. God of the open road. God of the twisting path. God of the narrow and upward way. Your people are gathered for worship. In this time, give us provision for the journey. Courage and faith and compassion and endurance to face any hardship. Open our eyes to see you walking beside us protecting us, encouraging us, loving us. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who moves us. Amen. Amen. Our opening prayer. Healing God, you invite all who are burdened to come to you. May your healing hand touch each one of us. May you teach us to reach out to you in our need and to help to lead others to you by our example. Jesus healed as a sign of your presence with us. He healed because he cared. May you teach us to reach out to others in their need and help us to show your love, your care, and your presence in our world. Amen. Let us join in prayer together. The prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Health and wellness has been an important ministry and mission of Walton for many, many years. As part of our parish nurse ministry, we've offered programs and retreats, special events and gatherings. Now with COVID, things have changed a bit. Where do we find healing? In the scriptures, in prayer, in virtual worship, in time connecting virtually with other believers. But on a day like this, I think it reminds us all that in God's creation, we can worship the creator. In God's beautiful earth that we've all enjoyed more than usual since March, there is a healing that comes, being part of God's creation. Come, let us worship. Litany of Healing Lord, you are willing to reach out your hand and touch the leper, and he was made clean. For your compassion, Lord, we give thanks. You saw the faith of the friends of the paralytic and assured the man, your sins are forgiven. 
For your forgiveness, Lord, we give thanks. The woman with the hemorrhage, but touched the hem of your garment and was healed. For your power, Lord, we give thanks. You touched the eyes of the blind and their sight was restored. For your mercy, Lord, we give thanks. You rebuked the unclean spirits and men were made whole. For your authority, Lord, we give thanks. Lord, the centurion sought help for his paralyzed servant and you responded. Give me a humble spirit, O Lord. The man with the weathered hand followed your instructions and was completely restored. Help me to be obedient, Lord. You heal the epileptic boy. With you, all is possible. Lord, we do believe. Help us overcome our unbelief. Welcome to Super Chef Canada, the show where we show you how to be a Super Chef. Today on Super Chef Canada, we have a special treat for you. We are going to be showing you how to make squid ink noodle soup with Super Chef Japan, Chef Morimoto. Hmm. Seems Chef Morimoto won't be coming today. His flight was canceled due to COVID-19 flight restrictions. So here instead is Super Chef Jean. Hello, Chef Jean. Thanks for coming to the show. I know you. You're the guy from TV who's always talking about squid ink. That's right. Do you like squid ink? No, it's gross. Man, just gross. And believe me, I know gross. Chef Jean, your specialty is camp food. That's right. What are some of your signature dishes? Well, we eat a lot of beans, kidney beans, refried beans, baked beans, and navy beans. Sounds like a lot of and beans. And I also make sloppy joes. Sloppy joes? Are you making sloppy joe today? No, Mr. Chairman, today I brought s'mores. S'more what? Not s'more what, s'mores. I brought s'mores. Those look lovely, but what did you bring s'more of? Unplug your ears, Mr. Chairman. These are s'mores. Chocolate, marshmallow, and graham crackers. S'mores, as in I want some more of that. Give me some more chocolate so I can make another one. And God always gave me some more than I asked for. He did? He always does. God loves us so much, and he's given us more than we deserve in his son, Jesus. Jesus died for our sins and to give us eternal life. But even after all that, God still gives to us. He's crazy about us, Mr. Chairman. Crazier than a man who eats squid ink. What a great thought, Chef G. Uh, just a little thing I like to remember when I make these s'mores. Always give your requests and petitions to God. Because when you do, you'll get s'more than you can imagine. That sounds like a winning recipe to me. I'm the Chairman, and this has been Super Chef Canada. See you next time. This morning's scripture reading is Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. 
Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Today is our annual Health and Wellness Sunday. We usually have a guest speaker often connected to our parish nurse ministry. Today there is no guest speaker, but we are praying for the health and wellness of the Walton Congregation, the nation of Canada, and the whole world fighting COVID-19. Back at the end of May, I celebrated a milestone anniversary of my ordination. Today, I want to share with you my top 10 pastoral care tips based on 10 Bible passages, 10 top tips I've learned over the years in ministry. One of the gifts of being a minister is that you share in a very private, in special way people's lives in times of great sadness in times of great joy and everything in between these are 10 tips I've learned about having a more abundant and peace-filled life I pray that if you can take just one of these 10 and apply it to your life at this moment in time, that it may bring you more health and wellness in your daily life. The first tip is, put that email written in haste into draft for at least 24 hours. Be patient, sleep on it, pray about it, act rather than react in difficult situations and circumstances. 1 Corinthians 13 tells us love is patient. There's a real blessing having a long and patient view of problems. Do not respond out of anger or frustration. We are told to count to 10. Often it's better to count to 10,000 or even more. It's okay saying to someone who wants an answer, let me think about it. Give yourself breathing space. Do not be forced by others to make a decision impulsively that may harm you over time. The second tip is that what seems to be the presenting issue in life is not often the real issue. Many times in the Gospels, the Pharisees ask Jesus tricky questions. For example, is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Which they asked Jesus in Luke 20. It's not that they wanted to learn from Jesus. They wanted to catch Jesus. Whatever way he answered that question, he would be in trouble. When people present you with complaints, problems, or issues, the real underlying issue is not usually the presenting issue. We need to dig deeper. Probe to find out what is really going on below the surface. My third pastoral tip is that once you reach a certain level to sustain your basic physical needs, money does not make you happy. This is also true of material things which money buys. In 1 Timothy 6, it tells us, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. In a world that stretches and stresses more and more, 
of everything. More things, more experiences. There's a diminishing return in happiness. It can also make us a slave to those things like debt and having to work more and more hours to have more and more things we don't really need. The fourth pastoral tip I want to share is this. This too will pass. In times our troubles pass. In time, one way or another, things do not remain the same. Genesis 8 tells the story of Noah, the ark, and the dove. But the dove could not find anywhere to perch because there was water over all the surface of the earth. So I returned to Noah in the ark. Noah reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. Noah waited seven more days and sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that water had receded from the earth. This flood of COVID will pass in time. Let's do all we can to make this passing shorter by following good medical practices. Whatever the flood you're facing in your life, it too will pass. The saying goes, tough problems do not last but tough people do. My fifth pastoral tip is bigger is not necessarily better. In Luke 12, Jesus speaks of a farmer who thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and big, build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. The story goes that when all the new buildings were done, the farmer died. Bigger did not help in the long run. The sixth pastoral tip is to remember, it's probably not about you. Mark 23 speaks of the Pharisees. Everything they do is done so people can see. They love the place of honor at banquets, the most important seats in the synagogue. But life is not ultimately about the best seats. Most of the time, life is not about you. Self-centeredness is not a healthy way to live. Number seven in my pastoral tips, bloom where you are planted. Avoid succumbing to the grasses greener in the next field complex. Say what you will do and then do what you say. Half of life is just showing up. In today's text, Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are, the, where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give thanks to God except the foreigner? Then he said to him, rise up and go your faith has made you well. Only one of the ten lepers showed up to say thanks. Only one bloomed in thankfulness. Number eight tip. If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. Or another way to put it, all that glitters is not gold. In 1 Peter 3 it reads, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, 
such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold, jewelry, or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self. Our looks change over time, don't they? What we own changes in looks and values as well. The glitter comes off over time. You see, we never can keep up with the Joneses. It is about the inner self, not the outer self to be truly healthy and well. The ninth pastoral tip is do not put your, all your eggs in one basket. In Matthew 25, there's a parable of the talents and the accounting with the master of the servant's one talent. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. You see, he hid the talent in the ground. Lastly, but not least, my tenth and final tip, spend less than you make. You see, the rainy day is coming. Or maybe we could call this tip, toys are not usually an investment. Matthew 25 says, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you've entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I've gained five more. The master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share with your master's happiness. The ninth and the tenth tips are from the parable of what's called the talents. How we use or abuse money lies at the root of many troublesome situations that I have witnessed in pastoral ministry. On this Health and Wellness Sunday, I pray that these 10 tips based on 10 Bible verses will bless you. Our pastoral prayer. Loving God, we lift you today all those who are scared, feeling vulnerable, afraid of getting sick. Give them peace and strength, Lord. We also lift those who are worried about loved ones or friends who are struggling with illness, with tests, with a diagnosis. Grant them healing, dear Lord. We pray for all those who are suffering because of COVID. May they know your healing power. We lift those who are challenged with the economy, with job strain and even loss. Grant them hope and ways to find a new job, an income. We pray for those who are struggling with relationships, with spouses, with children, with friends, with work colleagues or neighbors, Grant forgiveness and healing, Lord. When we feel alone and isolated, reassure us with a sense of your presence. Give wisdom to those in authority and may our communities come together for the good of all. We give thanks for all those who care for others and ask you to be with them in all they do. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, healer and physician. Amen. Amen.
our invitation to offering. Our witness to Christ may not be the ultimate sacrifice of our lives. Our witness may simply be to say yes to the call to share all our gifts generously and wholeheartedly. God takes pleasure in us, whether we are able to participate by providing support or whether we are among those who receive support. The invitation awaits our bold but joy-filled response. The offering will now be received. Let us pray. O oh, Holy One, these are the gifts of our hands and our hearts, sharing in thanksgiving. May they touch the lives of many. Where brokenness resides, may our gifts offer your healing and your wholeness. In the name of Christ, Amen. Our benediction. And now may the blessing of God be ours as we leave today. May we use the blessing of peace to calm our troubled spirits and our troubled world. As you go from this special time virtually, reach out to others. Show them that God's love is there for each of them every second of every day. Amen. Oh,